Hello guys, I welcome you all to Hackdo Cyber Security Tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss a new bug that has come into the picture in Android operating system called Strandhog Bug. Now, before we begin, I would like to inform you that we have a Telegram channel now where you can go ahead and subscribe and you can get the latest updates on our courses, on the tutorials that we make and the PDFs associated with these free tutorials. So go ahead and subscribe to our Telegram channel if you like. So in 2019, we have seen a cyber attacks happening in India. Uh, so there was this WhatsApp hacking of Indian journalists by the Israeli spyware uh, called Pegasus. So this was basically a spyware. We have seen the agent Smith malware, which was rumored to be originating from Chinese hackers, but we don't have an official confirmation on that. So we have seen a lot of cyber attacks happening in India. And that's the reason why the ministry is becoming more and more concerned about the state of cyber security in India. Now coming to our uh, strand hog bug. So recently a uh, alert has been issued by the Ministry of Home Affairs uh, to all the states about this strand hog bug and that it exists in the Android operating system. And this bug will basically steal all the user information from the device. So basically to understand this, let us see what updates have come. So here you can see a few news articles from the Hindu, which is a leading Indian uh, newspaper which says uh, you know android is vulnerable to cyber attack union home ministry so you can see the level of concern that has happened in even in the ministry for this kind of bug that exists in the android operating system so where did this uh, strandhog bug came into picture and who discovered it so a quick review of that would be there is an organization called promon it's basically a company that provides cyber security to a lot of organizations in and financial institutions in norway it's a norway based organization and during its research it came across this android bug in november 2019 so strandhog is basically not a malware it's more of a bug it's a more of a vulnerability or a weakness that exists in the Android operating system. So to reiterate, it's not a malware, it's not a ransomware, and it's not even a spyware. It's basically a vulnerability that already is present in the Android operating system. So for the people uh, who want to go into the basics, a bug is basically an error or a defect in the software or hardware that causes a program to malfunction. So bug is basically the unintended functionality that comes into a software or hardware. In this case android operating system and this malfunction is basically opening up a security loophole in the android operating system now how does the android uh, strand hog bug is exploited so the first thing to note down here is that you do not require a rooted device to exploit strand hog bug the strand hog bug can be exploited easily even on a non-rooted cell phone or an android device uh, the uh, standout bug basically takes the advantage of task affinity feature in the control setting of the Android operating system. And uh, this is basically allowing any malicious app to assume the identity uh, of a legitimate app in the multitasking Android operating system. So uh, how it basically works, where does the attack begin? So it basically begins with the user installing a dropper app or a malicious app. Uh, just to cover what a dropper apps are, dropper apps are basically the applications uh, that either pretend to have the functionality of popular applications such as games, uh, business applications, etc. Uh, but they instead install additional applications to the device which are malicious and steal data or uh, in now what we have seen is that these dropper app it themselves are the malicious applications so as you know even on the play store there is not a lot of security checks or verification done from the side of google for the apps that are present so uh, a classic scenario of the attack happening would be a user going to play store to download a game a popular game but ends up downloading uh, another application by the same name which is basically a dropper app and it's not the real game that he intends to download okay so this could be a malicious app so th that's just a analogy i'm trying to uh, give to make you understand so uh, coming back to uh, this slide and understanding how this attack is basically happening so the user goes ahead and downloads a malicious app or a dropper app uh, which basically pretends to have a functionality but itself is malicious uh, this could be on a laptop tablet or a smartphone that is using android os now this malicious application that wants to take advantage of the strand hog bug will basically execute a code that will trigger this bug and will start the legitimate application using the 
task reprinting feature of Android. Now this task reprinting feature in Android will basically happen in, uh, in a way in which the user will click on the malicious application. Now as soon as he clicks on the malicious application, the application won't work and won't have any functionality in it as it's just a dropper app. As soon as it is closed, a legitimate application would open up and this legitimate application will ask for a re-login and will be actually exploited using the task reprinting feature in Android. So what can be stolen from your phones? SMS, OTPs of your banking or any verification, photographs, videos, chats, any other user data basically that is present on your phone and uh, just to reassure that a phone does not need to be rooted in order for this bug to exploit it. Now this is uh, basically the way in which uh, the strand hog bug is basically happening the exploitation of the bug is basically happening so you know uh, most of you might think you know uh, so there is an involvement of a hacker uh, required for this bug to be exploited he has to target me and uh, even if there is a malicious app he still has to be willing to get my data well uh, this is a very wrong assumption to an extent see the reason is because now the hackers have developed bots using artificial intelligence and they just keep compiling your data so they don't have to be physically or manually be doing a targeted attack on you so whatever data is coming they're compiling it collecting it and once they have a big enough collection this data can be sold on the dark web or even used to manipulate you in further attacks so that is why that assumption is wrong so even if you think that you're not a valuable target or they would not be a hacker targeting you uh, you still are vulnerable because now the hacker bots are in place and they don't manually do that so how to protect yourself against truffle uh, against the strand hog see uh, right now there has not been a effective block or detection on the strand hog for Android device itself however I'll give you a few ways in which you can detect uh, if you have uh, downloaded a dropper app or a malicious app for example you download an application okay so the first thing is that uh, as soon as you open an application and you close it the application that is malicious uh, you go to an application which you have already logged in and it's asking you for logging in again so that could be a classic example where the strand of but strand hog bug is in place uh, the, an exception here could be if your apps are recently updated on android they generally tend to ask for a re-login so that could be an exception here but if you have not updated your application or uh, you know you have not logged out and you are being asked to a re-login after you have just downloaded an application which you are not so sure to trust that could be a classic example where uh, the strand hog bug is in play uh, Another example would be a permission pops up, uh, but it does not claim to have a application name. So you're just being asked to allow a permission, but uh, the pop-up does not show the application name, which is asking for this permission. Uh, another example would be uh, suddenly a calculator application or any application that shouldn't require a permission is asking for that permission. Uh, typos and mistakes in the user interface is another way to understand if these are malicious applications. Uh, since English is the most widely understood language and the hackers could be Russian, Chinese, even Indian or uh, Asians who do not know uh, the, you know, the proper language might do some typos and mistakes in the user interface. Uh, buttons and links in the interface that don't do anything when you uh, do an intent on them could be another example that this is a malicious application. Uh, another thing that I have come across in the recent analysis of uh, malicious applications that the back button doesn't seem to work with the recent Android updates. So malicious applications uh, have uh, this uh, thing that the back button won't work. So if it suddenly stops working uh, for an application you have just downloaded it's probably a malicious application okay uh, so what about the android security so that is uh, it i mean uh, so how do you uh, go ahead and even prevent this attack from happening or any malicious application so a quick guide here would be download apps only from the google play store and not from the sms's or whatsapp message links that you get 
only download the applications which you really trust and need don't go ahead and download the applications that you don't need or you just see you know there's an offer running and there's a cashback or something an sms comes to you and you go ahead and download it from the play store even the applications on the play store are not completely safe uh, there are a lot of malicious applications on uh, google play store so i would request you to only download applications that you really need uh, the other thing is that if you're downloading a popular application, you should go ahead and even check uh, what is the maximum number of downloads for that application. Uh, so only download the application that have more uh, or the maximum number of downloads. Uh, so that is probably the more legitimate one. Uh, do not uh, download apps by just Googling them on the Google website uh, with the app name or go to other websites that claim to have uh, you know these applications only download it from the google play store app in your phone so that is one way in which you can go ahead and uh, enhance your android security practice so uh, the bug should be fixed soon in the next google update uh, guys this is it for this tutorial uh, if you have any questions please go ahead and comment it uh, shoot me an email uh, and thanks for watching guys and god bless you as always Thanks for watching guys. Take care.